It is a GDH Mean Spotlight conversation with my buddy, and you know her yeah. as Dr. Lisa Obrecht on uh, General Hospital, my friend Kathleen Gotti. Hi, Miss Kathleen. Hi. Hi, Hi, Hi Mr. <laughs> How you doing, Dr. James? Good to Good. see you. Good. Good to see you, too. Now, before we start the GH talk, you have an event happening this weekend, don't you? Yes. Please. I'm 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 in my kitchen and Zoom, and um, it's a schnitzel fest. I'm going to be making some Austrian Hungarian food, and of course we're going to be talking General Hospital and uh, them laughing and drinking. So you bring a Stein, a beer Stein filled with beer or fake beer or water. I don't care what you drink. Come and join me on Zoom. You can get tickets at UncleVinny'sComedyClub.com, or I'm all over social media. If you're looking for an ad, you'll see my face going. <laughs> come and join me i'll be there this sunday uh i think it's like from four to seven east coast i'm sorry west coast um pacific yeah. standard time and east coast time it's it's from seven to seven to nine or something like that yeah. and four to six something, something anyway come and join me if you want to um and we'll have fun yeah. it's it's a valentine's day post it's a valentine's day schnitzel love fest that's yeah. what i'm calling it my schnitzel Ooh. love fest come and join me we'll have fun Yes, please do. Go to Gotti Treats Tweets if you want more information, too, because she has it posted everywhere. So go And there. ticket first at UncleVinny'sComedyClub.com. You can get yes. tickets. There. Go there, too. Do it. Do it. You won't be sorry. Do it. You won't be sorry. Yes. You'll learn to make schnitzel and some desserts and some stuff. Mm, and yummy. That sounds good. <laughs> That's good. All right. So, okay, now we'll do our drug. I want you to get your plug out because I know you, you got that going. I want you to be successful on that. So, my pleasure, of course. Um, now, you and I go way back. So, I, I was thinking about this the other day. When I was watching, yes, yesterday aired some scenes between your character and Carly and Willow. And I was just thinking how far your character, Liesl, has come all these years. Like, it's like, literally, it's like, it's like they've kept some of the you, they show some of your dark tendencies are still in there, obviously, but like how far you become kind of a matriarch of this band of women. How is that? How when you look back at that too, how does that how does that feel? You know, it, it's really great because I started out very ten years ago, oh, ten and a half years ago, very dark, evil, one one note Charlie character, and over the years developed some heart. I was given a daughter, I was given a son. Um, I got to do some nicer things. I got to sing, got to dance, got to do some comedy. But underneath it all, there's always Dr. Obert. And uh, I'm just, I'm scared of her. <laughs> As my husband, Michael, says, don't bring her home. Do not bring her home. You know, so I, I love the evolution, but there's also, she's still who she is. You know, you can, so much you can change. But I, I'm very, very grateful for the warmth that I've been allowed to express, you know, maintaining the the strength and the, and the harshness, I guess, with everyone else, but with her immediate family and the very close people to her, she's embraced them and fiercely loyal, fiercely protective, which is a lot like me too. And um, I, I just think that that I'm I'm really grateful to to be able to show some of those qual colors. Because, you know, instead, it's not interesting to just be mean, 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 but to show layers of people who, you know, we're all, we're all interesting in our, who we are, you know, we're, we're cruel, we're dark, we're evil, we're funny, we're silly, we're playful, we're children, we're adults, we're, you know, every single person is. And the fact that obex has been allowed to evolve and to show all these colors, I just embrace every layer of that because it makes for a much more interesting character. Yeah, and 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 I see the fans what they're writing. I'm like, we hate you. We love you. Anyway. We hate you. We're, I hate you, but I'm rooting for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I was I've been reading recently this. I you know, I usually don't read this stuff, but I I do appreciate. I do try to answer people and at least like the comments because I I I want to acknowledge the fans that they're you know they're they're. I appreciate their comments and I appreciate them taking the time. Some of them are, you know, I'm reading them. It's like, Lazel should be put out to pasture. I'm like, okay. You know, it's like, you know, yes, she's right. so mean. What do I say to I that? Like, my job. So what do I say to that? Yes. You know, all of us, we're just doing our job. We take yeah. the words and you try to elevate it and entertain the audience. Yeah. That's all we do. Nothing else. Well, it's funny. Uh, no ulterior motives. 
But for you, Kathleen, you being almost like this reoccurring character to be allowed, because you know, you know, you've done episodic, you've done things, to be allowed to actually evolve, that's almost a rarity too in this business. It is. It really is. And I and I appreciate that because I guess I've done over 520, 530 episodes. And and it is recurring, which is, you know, fantastic. So I can actually have a a life outside of here and do other projects and audiobooks and other films and yeah. television series and things like that. And so it's really good. But I love that the character again just doesn't come in as one note Charlie, does one thing, goes home, come back, kill somebody, leave, come back, you know, and, and that I get to show different things. For me, it's interesting. I need yeah. that. Yeah. And and I, I think especially in this stage of my life, I, I really, you know, I'm I'm happy to do recurring. I'm totally good with that. But I love the character so much. I'm in love with Obert. I, I love the role that I get to do so many things. To, and, you know, as an actor, it's more fun. It's more interesting to get to do, you know, crazy yeah. stuff and all yeah. over. So I do appreciate, even though I'm just recurring, I do appreciate that I get to do that range and, and entertain the audience. All I want to do is entertain that. You know, it right. doesn't matter right. if, you know, make people laugh or cry. You know, yeah. again, I keep, I go back to this, but my, my, best comments I get from the audience is when someone says, you know, for one hour, I forgot about my illness, the family trauma, yeah. this, the, that, the, you know, the, whatever the financial problems, this thing. I'm so happy to me. That's like the best gift ever, the best award. You know, it's like someone said for an hour, cause I'm that person. I'm the one in the audience going, just entertain me for an hour. Take me away from my day to day problems, the situations or whatever it is. You know, we've all gone through it. We all go through it. We all will, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. We, and I love to be entertained. I appreciate that so much, how how important that is. So I take my job very seriously, that okay. my job is to make people, to elevate people from where they are, if especially if they need to be <laughs> removed from that, yeah. their situation for an hour. Yeah. And if I can be part of that, a few moments of that, I'm just so grateful because I am also an audience who, who needs that. So just take me away, entertain me. I'm here, take me on a trip, you know? And I would say we're emotional tour guides to people's souls. And, and it's like, that's what I can do. I'm, I'm just like so excited and grateful. And when I get a script and I open it up and say, oh, good, I can take the audience on a little journey or, you know, come with me. And so people are like, I hate what you're doing. It's like, I do too. You know, I, I understand her, you know, or I love you, but go get Carly. I'm like, okay, let's go. Come on, come with me. You know, so kind of thing. And it's, it's fun. And we have a good time. You know, the actors were, you know, before we're like the scenes and Hey, how you doing? You know, Laura, when me, you know, everything's great. Yeah. Okay. Ready? And five, four, three, two, one. You, you. And then, uh, so, so really, so how, how are the kids? And you know, so, all my kids fine. And what do you do? And you, yeah. you. It was like, <laughs> It's like, it and people are like, don't hurt our cards. So it's okay. We're not going to hurt. <laughs> not in real life. Everything's fine in real life. We're all good. Yeah, it's real life. We're just oh. playing. Yeah. So we're just playing. Yes. And, and yes. I, I, you know, it's it's fun. Some people take it just as so close to seriously. Uh, yeah, they do. It's, it's just fun. They're fun. I want, you know, I want to bring up, there's a couple of things I want to bring up because of your, your, I mean, your performances have been really gorgeously heartbreaking. That's the best way I could put it. Thank you. Um, you know, have been really seriously. I know you can act and all that, so I'm like, that's not even it. It's just that it's just been very interesting because, well, I'll say, okay, so I'll get to that in a second. But the one thing that made me laugh was everybody, once they had Liesl go into Esme's room, it was like the whole audience was like, oh, I, mean, I got scared. Liesl. I was like, oh my God. Then we were reminded of the Liesl and just how they infused humor in it kind of to you. Like, yeah, but I mean, and, and they were trying to stop you and just like, I'm like, what this was? Who cares? I'll just smother her. And it'd be like, like, it's just funny. The pillow. Like, the pillow, the whole pillow. But it's like, it was just so funny. Like, the audience, because they have followed you on this journey, they're like, ooh, she lost. She, she thinks that her the Esme killed. Ooh, like they were waiting, they were waiting for you. They're waiting for the scenes to happen. It must be, it must be as an actor, it must be exciting also. Like, they're waiting for those scenes. It was like, it was exciting. Yeah. Totally, but actually that was a really funny scene that we had so much fun. It was the first time I'd worked with Esme and with Avery. Lovely, Amazing. lovely yeah. girl, just sweetheart. And again, another one, hey, yeah, you don't know. Don't worry, I'm sorry. And, no, 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 no. Actually, I'm going to put you out of your music. And then I stuff. we had a really funny moment where I was stuffing the, a rag into her mouth to shut her up before I inject her. She she bit down. She didn't meet and My finger got stuck. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Wow. <laughs> That was real. I mean, I tried not to laugh. I was thought it was the funniest <laughs> yeah. thing. It didn't, didn't hurt. It was just like this yeah, funny moment. Yeah. 
okay. she was mortified. I'm laughing my head off. Yeah. And it was, so I'm like, yeah. And they kept it. We didn't never redid it. Oh, there was no that is okay. And, was so, and that was a real chop. I'm like, oh. so I came out. She goes, oh. and afterwards, we're like, eh. and she's like, yeah. oh. and she's like, oh, sorry. I'm like, no, no, no. It's funny. It's so it doesn't hurt. I, I'm, I'm still have this. Well, I still have a finger half. But it was, <laughs> we were playing around and laughing. But that scene was so much fun. And then, and of course, it's thanks to the writers and the directors. Like, take the pillow. And then, and then the director was like, I think it was Gary Tomlin, I believe, oh, okay. and he was like, just struggle with the pillow. So here's Nina, you know, struggling. I'm like, yes. give me the pillow. I'm gonna, she goes, no. I'm like, what do you mean no? It's like no big deal. I'm going to go. You were. Yeah, you, you play like, like I'm going to take care of her, and then we'll go have lunch. That's what you made it sound like. It was like, you know, I got to do this. It was so funny. I mean, it's it's written like that. First, you don't want to laugh, and you have to like keep a straight face. We have one take, so we got to get it done. But it was so funny. And then she like, you know, I'm showing things she did, and I'm like, <laughs> and that was left in. It was and and I try to watch that episode. I try to watch all the, the episodes as much as I can to make sure I'm on point and accents okay, and I'm not oh, too yeah, big. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was interrupted right before oh. the bite. <laughs> this <laughs> typical thing. I don't know why. It's like. No, I want to see. So I got to find it in abc.com and look look back. Or something. It was so funny. That was well, like one fans, of my favorite. This is what do. Fans, cut that scene for Tagger and Agati tweets. That's what we got to do. So send it to I want to see the bite. I want to see the bite. Send it <laughs> it to was me. so funny. Um, so. Okay. So now I'll go to the more serious stuff. You had a scene with Maurice Bernard, our buddy, our buddy Mo, where in the gym, where you kind of let your guard down. And it's these, these are two characters you never like see together who would never, it was, it's the whole Nina connection clearly, but like you would never, and it was like, it was, he talks about the Alzheimer's with his dad. And I found myself sobbing like a baby. And I'm like, I these two people who are never together, were you shocked when you, had, when you saw that scene in the script that, that you and Sonny would actually connect for a minute? Over yeah, I, mean, I love that scene because these two, you know, Oh, yes. Uh, adversaries, uh, adversaries. <laughs> I have to say that word today. Adversary, not adversary. It's a European way to say it, but it's, uh, um, okay. But not only that, um, we we've had some some um, what's the word? <laughs> English, you know, so good. You know, uh, between us, we we yeah. we've had some issues, some tensions, and, issues. Yeah, here and there. Yeah, you know, and then he's with with Nina and that stuff. And then we had some problems. Oh yeah. He did some things against Scott. So I have to remember. This That's right. Yes. Scott, he yes. Scott, Scott, Scott. And I was like, so that was not good, but you know, let's remove ourselves from that in this moment. He's extending an olive branch and he's saying, look, I went through this with my father. And it was like, you know, so you forget a lot of times in life, you just put crap aside and you go, thank you. You know, you're, you're, there's compassion here, this empathy. And I just try to focus for Obrecht, especially instead of like, nah, 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 yeah. angry. like, here's a moment of compassion, of empathy. And, and I, I, I live for those moments uh, as an actor, you know, to, especially when you're playing a certain character and then, then you're allowed to like crack open that, you know, yeah. that harshness and, and allow some of the heart through. And those moments are really, really a gems for me. I, I'm so grateful for that. They're such gifts. Yeah. Because of like, most of the time she's like superficial, campy, yeah, broad, yeah, big. Yeah, no, no, no. And then here's like, here's her heart. Okay. It was you soft. Could... It, was it was soft. soft. And, and then and then that, you know, touching that moment, we touched each other. I was going to say that. Yes. That touch. Was that in the script or was that, or is that something that I was like, I was just going to mention that. I was like to the director, may I touch him? He said, they were like, sure. You know, it's, it's not, right. it's not really, you know, I, I mean, I don't know if we had hug in there, but it was kind of like, can we do that? And I think he took Oh, no, you guys didn't hug. You guys hug. It was just, it was more when you did the touch. It was like acknowledgement. I feel like we touched him. Yeah, I think I touched him. Maybe he hugged me. I don't remember. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> supposed to have happens. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The, same, the same thing happened with, I think they aired that episode. They did, actually, just last week or, or recently with, uh, after the um, Britta passing and then in, yeah. in the office with, with uh, Brad. Yes. With the ice cream. Right before uh, he left. beautiful yeah. ice cream model. I mean, that yes. was just I agree. he did he did a beautiful job. Barry's a wonderful, so I yeah, he's wonderful. He's a wonderful human being and he's a wonderful actor. I agree. I agree. And we had that moment and, and I asked the director, may I touch him here again? Because we were, you know, dissension yeah. between our, our, yeah. all of you know, all these years and and here's his, but I'm grateful. Obrecht is grateful to him 
for giving her daughter love, for giving her, her daughter friendship. And that means everything. So in this moment, let's put aside all that past stuff and let's just focus on this moment of gratitude that Obrecht never gives anybody. Right. And, and you know, and it was like, so again, for me, these are gems that I'm allowed to break that barrier of hostility and anger and campiness and just be real and natural. And, and I said, me, I touch his arm and they were like, yeah. And that moment was like, thank you. Yeah. Just that yeah. that meant thank you. And and I was just like, I, again, those those moments to me are gems are just like, mm, you know. well, I mean, well, now we have to go on to, I mean, Kelly and you, obviously. Um, but I know, <laughs> that, I know, I know, I'm like almost afraid to talk about it. It's just like, it was so good. Okay. My thing was when Nathan died, um, it's it was it was it was it seemed like it was a mother regretting things and kind of like it was a more more of a regret based kind of uh, mourning, but when Britt was dying, you had to actually actually went through this process with her, knowing she had Huntington's whole thing, and they had her die in your in your arms. I mean, it was just it was a whole that whole thing. We'll get to that too, but it felt like this. Twenty four is next. Twenty four uh, gay truth. I love it. She's on set, you guys. I'm at the studio. The studio. <laughs> you to me, I want to make sure you give me your flowers. The kids say your flowers. We give you your flowers because I felt you gave it the extra weight of now losing a second child. Uh, I felt like the first one, that's one thing, and hard enough. No one. But I felt like your performances, you gave us the heaviness of now I'm all alone. So I'm twenty five. And it's like, and you really did give these performances that were so heavy that me and my colleagues were just like, Emmy, 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 Emmy. I'm saying it now. I don't care. Emmy nomination. I'm saying it now. We were just saying it was, but you gave it. You gave a difference to me. Like so it was a. It was like now we're several years later. You and Kelly really worked. I mean, you and Ryan. We love Ryan. That's our buddy Pavey. He was great. But you've worked all these years with Kelly Tebow. Mm -hmm. That was like. It felt like it was all in the performance. So kind of talk about that because I think they gave you guys a lot of scenes together. And again, they and they gave you a lot of scenes together. They gave you a lot of scenes together. You know, it started out um with Ryan. First he was, you know, my first kid. No, first I got her and we worked together, but we had again, it was a lot of dissension and you know, my first scene with her was slapping her and it was like Yes, hey, that's we right. Had, we didn't have a lot of uh relationship or warmth or anything that we actually connected uh, initially. And then she left, you know, she was there for a couple of years and then she left for a couple of years and then she came back. And only from the time she came back a couple of years ago, did they start building this relationship. The relationship with, with uh, Ryan, Ryan Pavey, with Nathan, um, was we didn't have much time. He was, you know, he was, that's my, I saw him as a full grown adult. And, you know, with Donna Mills and I in jail, and I'm like, you yeah. know, my God, that's, that's my son. And it was, I love those scenes. You know, it's like the discovery, that's my son. Oh, my God. And it, but I had given him away. I hadn't, you know, we had such little time. There was warmth. There was special. And then he got shot and he died quickly. And there was none of this nurturing warmth. We had a couple of nice moments and it was yeah. very hard. But then, and in the meantime, my relationship is growing with Britta and we get closer and then closer. And now she's sick. And it's like, and and I don't know if anyone knows it, but the only each actor I get to work with, each character for Obrecht is totally different. I mean, I try to play it different because you know we have diff in real life you have chemistry yeah. different with everybody. Some people you like, some people you don't like. They don't like you, whatever it is. Yeah. But yeah. each person is different. But with her, it was like this kind of opening of love and my heart that Obrecht never had that. And she and I could play honest and down to earth and still be the mom and still be the Obrecht, you know, no, no, you know, you know. Yeah. but there was warmth and it was love and then, and compassion. And when I found out that she was sick, terminally ill, it's like, that changed everything. I can tell. And, and it made me realize, it made Obrecht and me, the two right, of us, right, 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 right. how precious every moment is in real life and in and on television and and to savor it and to treasure it and and those and knowing that she was not just leaving the show but i, I again because i i value that the character has that side that oba gets to have that warmth and the love that she i have with nobody else on the show nobody oh, not even scotty scotty's like we're teasing and joking oh, you know schnitzel you know it's, it's it's a whole different thing but with britta i was able to open up and be totally natural 
and honest and not that campy and you know all that stuff so it was just such an exciting um opportunity to to have that with her and then when the discovery of her dying it's like that's it obrecht is finished i mean there's nothing so now flash forward if we're gonna move into you know with with willow i maybe are too soon to say that but it's like this possibly another opportunity yeah, to have a possible, yeah but it seems like maybe started, but maybe yeah maybe you know we don't know we don't know, we don't but know. We don't know. if if you know if I could possibly donate, you know, maybe I don't know. But there's no right. love. I mean, we're done. Obrecht is done. There is nothing. There's nobody. And even at the funeral, people are like, "How come you weren't sitting closer to Scotty?" It's like Obrecht is so dot alone. I there was I didn't want to. I, I I was like, you know, when I lost my mom, it's like, don't let anyone touch me. I, I don't need a hug. I just need to have this moment. You know, it's like, and when I lost my closest friend and I lost, you know, my father, I mean, all these moments, it's like, you can't possibly hug me because that's not, I mean, for me, it's not going to help. I need hugs. But in this moment, I just need to think about that person and my connection and my loss. And and so that's how I've been playing it, that this Obrecht is done. You know, now it's like, what kind of retaliation? What what can she do? You know, she's trying yeah. to save, save her life somehow, but I don't know what's going to happen next because she's really done yeah no, you, know? no, you play do you play it that way no you play it like just it's just yes you're in a sea of people but you're still alone you feel alone and that yeah that was a very lot. strong choice yes yeah that, that was that was a very strong choice and and you know and kelly tebow and i we've had the best time working together it's again working you know you don't i, I work on a show and there's 60 actors and almost every day i'm working with somebody different so yeah, you know you so, yeah so you don't always get to create enough relationship and chemistry yeah. and that takes time and we have over the years and i treasured that and we really got along in fact i'm going to do another shameless self-promotion kelly Thibault, myself and roger howarth oh. we're doing four events in march we're traveling to the east coast boston new jersey yeah. philadelphia and staten island it's on social media it's everywhere okay. look at Kelly Thibault's or mine, we're coming, the three of us. It's like a farewell tour for Kelly and, and yeah. Roger Howarth. All you women, I know you're crazy about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come yeah. see us. We're having two yeah. private dinners and two kind of bigger events there. So if you guys just, again, follow my social media, you'll see it all over. Kelly Thibault's, you'll see it on our on our uh, pages. But anyway, that's so that. But but working with um, Kelly, we had that really lovely rapport. And, that, and you know, when I was holding her and she was dying, it was, it was multi-layered and a lot of that was real. It's like, you know, I'm so happy for her. I want, you know, it's like, especially when you love someone, yeah. I don't have kids, but I can imagine, but I have friends that are my children, yeah. kind of eternal to everyone. It's like, you know, I want you to be happy. James, I want you to be, you know, it's like to me, just people that I love or have been kind to me or, you know, nice in my life. I want them to be happy. They deserve to be happy and, and loved and cared for. And she found love and she's pursuing her other passions and her things like, go do, you know, but it's like, you're leaving me so it's like this two-edged thing and i i'm in some ways i'm really glad i didn't have kids because i think it would have broken you know yeah. broken me i would have been a, a, a broken piece of <laughs> glass and a lean piece like what do you mean as far as i'm concerned if i would have had a kid it's like 50 years old you're not leaving until you're at least 50 it's like what do you mean you're leaving me you're 50 you know it's like I, you're not ready I'll tell you when you're ready. Oh my god, that's <laughs> hilarious! Yeah, no, Kelly's lovely. I got to interview her at the Emmy. I got, I got to see her win her Emmy. I got to interview her at the Emmy. She's lovely. I, she was, she was amazing. With I saw her with her mom. It was, it was a whole thing. She was amazing. She's amazing, and she has a bright yeah. future. She has a bright future. Um, yeah, you yeah. did convey. You guys, you guys did convey a good mother daughter dynamic, which is something that's, a, that's which is that you know is a special thing. Um, and I just think, I just think she's, she's a phenomenal actress. She's just, she's just seemed, it just, it's, you both really meshed well together. So it was, it was, it was for the audience. We loved it. We loved yeah, it. it was, it was a joy working with her. And it's like, who's the next person I can love? <laughs> I know, right, exactly. Well, I'm going I'm I'm to bring up something. You have a little side thing that all of us, we like it too. You and, and Michael Easton. Our magic, as as, as you yeah, guys had a scene recently where it was just like you circled each other and then you started talking. Like it's like, I guess they'll never be friends. I guess Finn and her will never be friends. Like they'll never be friends. But there's something there. I, I'm swear. I mean, like there's just this odd chemistry between you two as actors. I'm like, I'm fascinated by watching you two. He is so much fun to work with. He's just one of the nicest human beings, a sweetheart, gentleman, professional. Yes. He's always like, do you mind if I this or say that? No, it's just fantastic to work with him. 
And he's, <laughs> and the that was totally the director. She goes, I want you to walk around. I'm like, oh, that's good. Because I'm, I'm saying all these things about Elizabeth. Right. You know, she's lovely and I care about her. But then I'm like, I'm saying this to his face, but I'm not really meaning it. So she goes, why don't I want you to walk away? I'm like, oh, that's great. Then I can like bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Yes, while I'm yes. walking away. Sure, sure. You don't see my face, but you know. Yeah. I just fantastic, but my, one of my favorite scenes with Michael. Sorry, my hands. I, I, my this, favorite this scenes with our hands. With our hands. With our hands. <laughs> I know. Get down. My one of my favorite scenes we did um, with Michael Easton was when I when I fell off the haunted star. I got pushed off the haunted That's star right. by Par uh, by Brad. That's right. Well deserved push. A well deserved push for Obrek. No problem. Yes. I'm okay with that. But then I'm almost drowned, and he gives me mouth to mouth. <laughs> Resuscitation, and I'm like, you are coming to and, and and he goes, you're something I forget. I'm like, how rude. He goes, you're welcome. It was, it was, I don't remember. It was just so such a great, funny, funny moment. I and agree. he he got to say again, you're welcome. And this time, and I went, oh my god, there was like history pieces. Stuff. The writers sometimes just throw in some zingers that I'm just like, okay, this is clever. They're always clever, but this was like really, really good. Oh my god, I love it. Yeah, because that that was that was a great. But yeah, you guys have this. I mean, you're right. That from the other scene, there was this direction that was really fun to watch. It was like, <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm noticing General Hospital. I mean, I'm friends with Fido Xavier, of course, and and, and Allison. Oh, he's fabulous. Oh, I love him for years. I've known him for years. We're friends. I know Allison. So it's kind of funny to watch each of them put their stamp on episodes of General Hospital. It's fun <laughs> to watch them do that. But that was that was what I just you two out and just. I guess they'll never completely ever like each other, I guess. I guess it's kind of, I don't know. It's, it's no. very interesting. Yeah, they no. will. They're they're right. Especially now with this whole Elizabeth thing. And, and, yes. Yes. You know. Oh, we'll, yeah, we like and, and that's okay. So we got to talk, we got to talk about um, my girl, Cynthia Watros. You are now, I mean, this Nina Aunt Liesel. And it's just, I love it. It's like, and you're right. Every, every relationship you have, like, you with Maxie and Kirsten, that's a whole separate thing too. So, but with her, it's almost like you guys are friends slash aunt and niece. I don't know if that is that what it is. I mean, you, absolutely. Okay. And again, she is now because before we had also, you know, we we got along great. And I remember one day I was saying, you know, and then and then that whole thing with Sonny and Sonny was mad. It's you know did something against Scott, so I got very protective of Scott. And of course now Nina's with Sonny, and I was like, mm -mm. no, no, twenty six. I, I was like, no, 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 that's not cool. Not cool that, you know, Yeah. here was Sonny. So I, I so Nina and I kind of had little, little, um, you know, uh, out and out yes. in different directions. We went our own way. Yeah. And um, so when I lost Britta, I remember one day I was saying, now I have no one. And she said, well, thanks a lot. <laughs> you know, I, I said, I, you know, we're in the in the makeup room. And I said, yes. I have no one to have. I had chemistry with. I had no one to have you know, chemistry with. And she looked at me, she goes, well, thanks a lot. And I went, no, 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 I don't mean, because we have great chemistry. Her yeah, and I yeah. probably work. So it's it's not like um, th that, you know, her and I, her and I work a lot, worked a lot. You know, we, we've been bonding really well. She's a lovely, and I mean, probably one of the nicest human yeah. beings ever. Yeah. Not just here at General Hospital, but ever. I'm yeah, kind, I like an angel that floats around just... Just, I mean, she she just oozes kindness. I mean, next to her, I feel like like the devil. And, you know, it's like she's just so kind and warm and loving. I'm like, I want to be you when I grow up. <laughs> but she's just lovely, you know. So, and we we bonded, and we, you know, I think we we work really well together. It's a pleasure to work with her. She likes to rehearse. I, she's just a gem, and yeah. talented and wonderful. And so anyway, and then we had this this time of part of of not liking each other and then and then of course Britta and all that stuff and then she dies it's like I have no one to have chemistry with she goes, well, thanks a lot. No, no 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 and now they they've allowed that to you know that healing and we're back together and and now she's my compadre my you know my buddy yeah, that's yeah. that's the person my yeah. my person right now yeah. more than anyone else yeah. I just love it I just I just you know again I said just watching your character just Grow and flourish in a in a industry where it doesn't always happen for a character either. Whether whether you're reoccurring or not doesn't matter. A lot of times characters are just stay kind of the same all the time. You actually had a chance to fully play this character from one end to almost the other end of the spectrum, and actually that's actually amazing. So thanks to General Hospital for our, and the writers over the years just allowing Obrecht to not be this cartoony villainy. Yeah, one note. Is that, 
that's i mean you know and people they're like oh that's nice you know but that's again one note charlie it's not interesting it's right. not interesting as an actor and it's not interesting for the audience you always have that tell me about them, tell me about you you i'm gonna kill you you know it's it's nice to show and, and for me I, again as an actor that's what i live for to have those let me show everything especially when i'm working on one show right now you know sometimes i go off and work on something else or do an audio yeah. book or something yeah. but basically this is my main job yeah. and and because i'm here a lot it's like i want to have the colors and have the variety and and then it's it just makes it more interesting but it's also more interesting for the audience i mean each time i get a script i go how can i make this different for the audience how can i entertain them how can i make it funny or set you know it's like i really think of the audience it's like well i've been playing evil for the last two years or the last six yeah, months yeah. how can i change it up let's you know and, and then the writers help i mean they they do the work for me. They make it, okay, this is funny. Or they're throwing a great line, you know, funny lines. And it's like, bless your art, you know, or funny action, like with the pillow. I mean, it's like, really? Someone's just going to take a pillow. Oh, you know, it's no big deal. I'm just going to take this pillow. I haven't, didn't finish, you know, the gag and the thing. I'm just going to finish hilarious. the job. Oh my God, that was hilarious. Yes. You know, so, uh, so it's really the writers who give me that. And I'm just so grateful to them because they keep me satisfied. I guess that's, I, I always, every time I blow out a birthday candle or something, I just, I just want to be satisfied. I don't really care, you know, as an actor or as a human or whatever. It's just, just want to be happy and satisfied with what I'm doing. And not like, I wish, you know, the FMO, what is it? Fear of missing out or FOMO or something. Yeah, FOMO. I, I wish I played another character. I wish I was in another show. I wish I was doing, the, yeah. you know, it's like, no, I just, you know, they say bloom where you're planted. I love that expression. And it's like, I'm planted here right now. I want to bloom and make it interesting for the audience. Yeah. And make them and for myself, because I need to entertain myself when I'm doing the job. You well, know, you know I, that's what you say, because I was telling somebody, somebody, asked, somebody asked me the other day, um, you know, James, you see yourself retiring. And I said, not really. I said, I see myself working as long as it's interesting. I feel like you're saying the same thing. As long as you're still getting something out of it, too. Right. So, that, so you can push out. So if you're getting fed, then you can feed others. Right. I, and oh, I, I that's like, beautiful. Oh, yes. Yeah. I totally agree. I love that. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that's what it is. Like, as long as I'm getting fed, I will continue to be in this business and continue to do projects, continue to... I mean, the interest has to be there. Something has to keep you growing, keeping you in check. And I feel like you're the same way. You're just kind of like, I'm going to work until I guess I can't, right? Just, I'm just like, anywhere. I just are... Um, yeah, as, as long as I'm able, mentally, physically, yeah. health-wise, God-willing, you know? I, I, let me say, I, as I said, as long as I'm able mentally, physically, health wise, you know, God willing, I, I like to stay working like yeah. Betty White till I'm 100, yeah. 99, yeah. And, you know, point yeah. nine nine, And and also, yeah, as long as the work is interesting and, and you know, it isn't always interesting. And, we, you know, a lot know. Of times, my manager goes, sometimes it's a bartending job. It's like, oh, some job, just do the job. And, you know, I come and say, I mean, I, I, there was like three years I was saying, Dr. Finn did it. Dr. Finn did it. Dr. Finn did it. I'm like, I don't want to say Dr. Finn. You know, I was like, but, but the story needed that. Sometimes I just came in and I need to carry the story for someone else and say, Dr. Finn did it. And it was so funny because uh, Matt Cohen, he played. Oh, Griffin. He played Griffin. 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 Yes. And I had to say, Dr. Dr. Monroe. Yeah, and I remember, it, and I said, hello, you know, something, Dr. Monroe. And I kept saying, so, Dr. Finn, I'm like, you idiot. All right, this is I'm 27. This is everyone from, well, going up to the roof. Go to the roof. So we had to, so we had, we had to redo it. It's like, okay, yeah. so you know, Dr. Dr. Monroe, Dr. Monroe. Okay, and five, four, three, two, one. Well, you know, Dr. Finn. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, it's one take. That's I must have done it three, four times. I'm like, I'm an idiot. I, I, I because I had been saying Dr. Finn for three solid years. I couldn't. Get, I'm just like, please let me say something else. And finally, that story finished, and I went to jail, and we moved on. But I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I think they realized that I was like messed up in my head. They're like, you know, let's 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 not let her say Dr. Finn anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think. I guess you ha are currently on the canvas. You've worked with most people on the canvas, I'm thinking at this point. You know who I have to mention? More shameless self promotion. Please. Charles Shaughnessy. Oh, I love him. Oh, Big my God. Him. Oh. And I mean, another, I have, you know, there's, I love everybody here, but there's a handful of people that are just, we work together. That guy, he's awesome. He's, you know, a gentleman, yes. classy, well-trained. He always knows the material. He likes to rehearse everything. You know, it's like, that's my background. You rehearse, yeah. you train, you show up, you know. You're so and it's like, oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to work with him. 
We are also more shameless self Jackie Z. Jackie Z. Aha. We, we, um, we're doing two events on, on May, I think, 6th and 7th in the East Coast at Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club. We have tickets there, dot com. And also, I think we're doing a private dinner in Philly. So that's Charles Shaughnessy from the Nanny and That's you, so, yes, exactly. But, you know, it was so much fun because I did a, um, you know, I had Teo Penglis was Victor. Oh, yeah, my buddy Teo. Oh, I love Teo, my Teo. Great guy, great guy. We had a great. really good time. And then, you know, I got, then I killed him. Yeah. Well, almost. I thought yeah. I did, but I guess I thought not. You did too. I thought you did too. But really did. <laughs> I guess it wasn't. I did. That's another one. I shot him. I used the pillow and then blew up the building or he blew it up. So, and he still lived. So anyway, but he came and here's Charles Sean, who's just funny and warm and yes. talented and kind. And yes. it's like, oh, you know, and we, we have good chemistry together. And, you know, I'm not going to say that we have scenes or not, but he's lovely. <laughs> he's, met, he's mentioned you recently because of Britta. So he did mention you recently on the show. He's like, I wonder how Liesl's doing. Oh, yeah. Like, Kelly, I would need you. So I was like, okay. So that's very interesting. He mentions her. So I'm like, because I was like, wait a minute. When he first came on, he was in love with her. She rebuked oh, yeah. him because of Scotty. And he threw Scotty out of, out of a plane. I mean, that just made me laugh. But I mean, but yeah, he was into Liesl. But I mean, that was the whole thing is he was into her. Uh, so yeah. then it was like, yeah, so I'm glad he kind of brought it around. He was just like, yeah, I wonder how Lisa's because she, you know, she lost her daughter. And I was like, yeah, everybody around you, because Spencer was close to Britta. So I was like, it was like, it, it can't, they mentioned it recently. They mentioned something recently. They haven't, we haven't, we don't know yet. We don't know anything yet, but they mentioned something recently where he was like mentioning. Okay. You know, it's funny because I don't, you know, know everyone's material. Yeah, like, yeah. We, we come to the makeup room. So, what's your character doing? Oh, I mean, I talk about it. I'm in love with you and we're getting married next week. Really? Oh, that's not, you know, it's like, you don't yes. know. It's so funny. It's like, what did you do? Well, I killed so and so. Oh, that's too bad. You know, it's like, it's really, fun. that's, but you, we really find out what other people are doing when we're in the makeup room because yeah. I don't know. We don't get each other's scripts. You know, yeah. this is, it's, it's a whole different yeah. industry than it was when I started 30 years ago, 40 years ago. So yeah. it's really fun, you know, who's doing what. But so people like, I'll talk about people, you know, people like, oh, there's a lot of talk about you. What did they say? <laughs> <laughs> what have they been saying? <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love you, Kathleen. You know that. And and folks at home, she is. This is who she is. She is like, I mean, you're my favorite people in the world. So you know that. <laughs> and you're, you're my one favorite. You're awesome. I would yeah. love talking to you. <laughs> I always love talking to you, too. So Kathleen Gotti. So go to Gotti Tweets and see all of her stuff that's coming up. Support her. Support her. I've been posting on my pages, too. I've been retweeting stuff and posting it. Uh, oh, follow her oh, stuff. Oh, She's oh. a lot of fun. They do it. Instagram, uh, Twitter. Yes. Facebook. Yes. Follow her. <laughs> Follow her. Do it. Do it now. Um, and of course, I'm James Lodge. Spotlight. We'll see you next time.